Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting this semi-abstract um, winter trees scene featuring um, a foreground uh, winter tree growing from an old tree stump. It's based on a painting that I did um, a couple of years ago um, that I rediscovered when I was searching through some paintings the other day. Um, this is my earlier painting and you can see it's very similar to the one um, that I've just shown you. I'll be using a limited palette of just two colours, Davidson's Grey and Antwerp Blue. These are from our handmade watercolour collection, our signature Davidson's Grey, but you can use Payne's Grey instead. And the Antwerp Blue is something that I'm researching and developing at the moment um, from the handmade pigments made by the Alchemical Arts, but please substitute um, Prussian blue. If you're interested in um, any pigments uh, by the Alchemical Arts and his YouTube channel, I'll leave a link below. Currently, um, we don't have any of our Davidson's pigments on sale. We are working on the next launch, which should be available at some point in a few weeks' time. So let's move on to the painting. I'm using Milford 100% cotton cold press watercolour paper. It's 11 inches by 15 inches or 28 centimetres by 38 centimetres. It's taped to my board with ordinary decorator's masking tape and I'm going to be painting wet in wet. So my board's at an angle of 45 degrees so that gravity will help me paint. I'm using a Princeton Aquarelite synthetic modeler brush to wet the sky all over and now I'm adding um, a mixture of my Antwerp blue and Davidson's grey but remember you can use Payne's grey or any sort of sort of neutral dark grey and Prussian blue. I'm just allowing the paint to drift down the page with gravity to give me this soft graduated wash and then I'm just bringing some of the same colour into the landscape quite softly. I want a distant hill and distant trees um, so I'm pretty much copying my old painting or trying to get something similar anyway. So I'm going to use the tips of my brush and a much richer drier mixture of paint. That means that it will stay there on the damp sky wash. If I was to add um, wetter paint there, there's the danger that I might get runs and cauliflowers um, or the paint might just run down the page with gravity. So some really thick, um, very heavy with Davidson's grey paint across the foreground and that will start off my um, area when, where I'm going to build up my foreground tree. And then just putting a few little dibs and dabs of paint here and there um, just to suggest little bits of grasses and something and nothing sort of showing through the snow and then pulling up some distant trees over on this side in the mid-ground. Softening back with a small squirrel mop and then etching through those distant trees just a few little marks with a, the corner of a plastic card to add a few sort of hints of um, tree trunks and things like that in the distant trees, nothing too much. So I'm trying to keep it really loose, um, very sort of semi-abstract, um, just suggesting the features rather than painting them overtly. And of course, a lot of the success of this painting will depend upon um, correct use of tonal values. So I'm just going to get a few darks in underneath those distant trees and into the foreground and the midground, but not too much in the midground. I want that to be fairly empty and suggestive of an expanse of snow. So I'm just moving backwards and forwards, softening here, putting in a few hard marks there, and now just um, scraping through some tree trunks, which will mostly be hidden by my focal point tree, but they should show up nicely behind the tree and add a bit of depth and distance. So 
maybe some grasses pulled out with the card through the paint while it's still damp. So I'm trying to not overdo it, but yet get as much as I need to done with this wet in wet process. I think I need just a little bit more dark where I'm going to establish my tree stump and my tree. Nice thick rich mixture of paint and then I'm going to flick some clean water. Droplets will just get flicked into the foreground and that should give me some lovely textures um, and just sort of loosen things up a lot more in the foreground. I'm now going to leave it to dry completely. And I think it's important to say that at this stage, it's good to step away from the painting because this sort of style of painting looks best when there's very little done to it and that the washes are kept nice and simple. The painting is now completely dry. And so I'm going to begin to add the detail to it. And for this, I'm going to use my... Um, sword liner. It's a Pro Art synthetic sword liner and to start with I'm using a really, really pale mixture of the blue and the grey together. Very pale, almost just like paint water and I'm going to enhance those distant trees a bit with branches. These should all be hidden once the tree goes in but what that will do is give me some depth and distance behind my um, focal point tree stump and tree once I put that in a lot darker. So building up this background is the most important thing at this stage. Trying to keep the branches really nice and fine. As I say most of them will just sort of disappear behind the main tree but I think to get the layering right and to get the scene to look fairly convincing it's important to get this background in first. And once those branches are dry, I can dip into a really rich dew consistency mixture of Davidson's Grey and Antwerp Blue, heavily um, weighted towards Davidson's Grey. And using my three quarter inch flat brush, I can shape my tree stump. And then changing to a small calligraphy brush, I can begin to uh, pull out the tree and branches that are growing out from the old dead tree stump. You often get this. It's a little bit like what happens when um, trees are pollarded or coppiced. You'll get stems growing out from and around the trunk. And this is what I'm trying to suggest here. So a really old tree has been cut down um, and yet um, it, there's still life growing from it. I'm pretty much being guided by my original painting for this. If any of my lines are too large or too dark, I can carefully knock them back with a piece of tissue or paper towel and then continue to paint these branches in trying to get them sort of crisscross a little bit, keeping them nice and thin, fairly elegant. I mean, this is a sort of fairly stylized sort of um, impressionist or semi-abstract painting. So I'm not looking for realism, uh, but I'm still looking for something that will still fairly convincingly represent a winter tree. As at this stage, I'm painting with wet paint onto a dry painting, I can take my time, there's no rush. Um, I can just keep working at this tree until it looks balanced enough. I'm emphasising the branches, the way that they lean up across the painting from right to, to top left. And this kind of helps in with the composition as well and it helps sort of to provide um, the tree as a focal point but then to guide the eye around the rest of the painting.
So I'm bringing a few um, sort of twigs and sticks growing up from the other side of the of the um, of the stump, and then I'm using my small squirrel mop, clean and damp, and I'm softening back to add texture and to bed the stump into the snow but to keep enough sort of shadowy sort of tone around that. So after working on filling out the tree a little bit more, now going in with the final dark accents to pull that tree across um, into the lighter space near the middle of the painting um, so that it really stands out as the focal point, but is also sort of making a more balanced composition and then the last thing is to put in some um, darker accents uh, below the tree um, the idea of maybe some roots and things just traveling and sort of showing a little bit through the snow around the base of the tree stump I think I'm going to call that finished now. You could add some birds or some figures or any more details like that if you want to. Uh, but I think I quite like the sort of desolate, rugged sort of bareness of this, um, this scene. It's the first um, sort of winter snow scene that I've painted this season. So removing the tape, we get to see how it looks with a clean white border. And that kind of brings the painting together and shows us sort of roughly what it would look like um, with a frame or a mount. So if we take a slightly closer look and zoom in, um, you can see that it's all very loose and sort of lots of soft diffusions from the wet in wet painting and some harder, um, harder edges uh, from the painting um, wet onto the dry underpainting um, and some lovely dark accents. But it's all just very suggestive of the scene, nice and loose and sort of fairly impressionistic and abstract. And just using the two colours for which you can use um, Payne's Grey and Prussian Blue. So thanks so much for watching. Please leave us a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And thank you so much to my wonderful Patreon group who support this channel. And I'll see you again soon and happy painting. Bye.